Childhood hunger is a serious issue, especially now that school is out. In fact, more than 13 million children face hungry hunger every day in the country. To break that down even more, 250,000 kids are faced with it each day here in Mississippi. And research shows unemployment, poverty, and low wages play a big role in the alarming trend. And this closing the gap segment, we explore the problem as well as the programs available to help combat it. Of course, we as adults would find it difficult to do our jobs if we were hungry. And for kids, it's exactly the same way. No child should ever go hungry, but unfortunately they do, especially during the summer months. Well, a lot of people don't know that Mississippi is the hungriest state in the nation. Charles Beatty is the CEO of the Mississippi Food Network. It's an agency dedicated to fighting hunger, which is a growing problem in this state and country, especially among children. Over 250,000 children and 100,000 senior citizens. So the hunger problem in the state of Mississippi is a serious one. And with school out this summer, many students who rely on healthy meals are left with empty stomachs, frustration, and other health consequences. We believe that a child who does not have access to a healthy, nutritious meal may struggle to receive instruction and retain information. It's really difficult to hear what a teacher may be saying or presenting to you um, over the rumble of, of hunger in your stomach. Susie Q. Evans-Gator is the director of the Summer Food Service Mississippi Office of Child Nutrition. She says the free Summer Food Service program is designed to ensure children have access to healthy, nutritious meals, even when school is out of session. Right now in the state, we have um, almost 100 organizations that operate the summer food service programs. These sponsoring organizations operate feeding sites at various locations throughout the state. This cheeseburger. And the Madison School District participates in the program, which aims to close the child hunger gap in that area. You know, for families who may not have access to nutritious groceries, uh, who may have trouble making ends meet, this is a wonderful way to serve those needs so that kids have nutritious foods. And for more than 30 years, Jackson Public Schools has also participated in the summer feeding program. Right now, it has at least a dozen locations that are open weekly. No child in our community has to be hungry. There's an opportunity for a child to pick up a breakfast and a lunch, especially during the summer when there's summer activities and summer school and other things that children are involved in. And get this, in the first week of the program, JPS fed more than 12,000 lunches and 8,000 breakfast plates. We expected to feed around 60,000 lunches for the month of June and about 45,000 breakfasts. In an urban um, school district like ours, there are food pockets and food deserts throughout the city, so it's very important that we provide meals during uh, the summer. And Stephanie George couldn't agree more. Everything is expensive, and you know, sometimes come, the kids come to school and the breakfast and the lunch is all they actually get for that day. She is the child nutrition manager at Blackburn Middle School. What we do, we reach out to the community, send out flyers, I send out flyers. I have like five or six daycares, plus I have the in school. So we make sure we take care of them when they come to just the public schools, summer feeding. The State Department of Education's Summer Food Service Program is also catering to rural areas. See right now across the nation, one in five kids lives in hunger, and those numbers are even higher in rural communities. In fact, according to the USDA, 84% of the U.S. counties with the highest percentage of childhood hunger are rural, and some of the factors include economic instability, financial insecurity, transportation barriers, and limited access to affordable food. One of the um, provisions of the Summer Food Service Program is that um, in our rural areas, our participating sponsors can provide what we call non-congregate feeding, or we refer to it as grab-and-go meals, where families can um, visit a site and take meals off-site to consume at home. Um, at a later time, and in some instances, they can receive um, multiple meals for multiple days um, so that they won't have the challenge of trying to find transportation to a site each and every day. And just talk about some of your partnerships. Okay. Um, in throughout the state, we have partnerships with um, boys and girls clubs. Of course, several of our local school districts, our YMCA, um, organizations, um, some of our 
private nonprofit entities such as the Mississippi Food ne Network participate in the summer food service program. And speaking of the Mississippi Food Network, the nonprofit is located in Jackson and distributes more than 1 million pounds of food and feeds more than 150,000 people every month, which totals 1.8 million people per year. While we're in a low resource state, we're in a generous state. So we have people who are contributing to the work that we do financially in order for us to get more food to the people who need it, and particularly the children. Okay, and talk about some of the programs that are available to help children, especially during the summer. We have backpack program, the summer feeding program, the after school uh, feeding program, specifically designed for children. And talk about that backpack program. How does that work? Well, uh, during the course of the school year, Again, uh, the school, in many instances, in too many instances, is where the kids get their, uh, their meals from. So they don't always have good meals across the weekend. So the backpack program provides meals for them to eat across the weekend so they can get back to school on Monday where the food is served. While these local and state organizations, schools and feeding programs are all on the front lines combating child hunger, they would like to see more people joining in on this fight. We believe that within every community, there is the ability for some location to serve as a site um, through partnership with maybe more established organizations so that children have a location where they can go and consume and receive meals. We would also like to see our rural non-congregate participation grow in the future so that those children that have transportation challenges will still have access to meals in the summer. So making sure that students have good nutritious food, access to those meals is really critically important to make sure that our students can, can learn and do their best. Uh, coming up a pop